Kia ora, welcome back. I'm the Kiwi Coder, and today I'm here to show you how to create a third person shooter like the one you can see here. Um, so, our player, it's, it's like a strafing controller. Basically, it can uh, strafe around in circles and circle objects. Uh, this is very similar to how um, Fortnite and PUBG uh, character controllers work. Uh, they're a little bit different from normal third person controllers where the character will actually turn as you hit left and right. In this case, it will, it will just strafe left and right and then you use your mouse to, to do the turning. Uh, there's a cross here at the center of the screen which you can use for aiming uh, and I hope to create a follow-up video to this which will actually show you how to uh, attach a weapon to your character and, and make it shoot at that cross here. Um, cool, so yeah, let's get started. I'm just going to outline the assets used in this tutorial. Uh, so the first one is the Polygon Starter Pack. Uh, you can find this on their asset store for free. Um, or if you have your own assets that you prefer to follow along with, that is fine as well. Um, so the next one is actually a GitHub repository by Unity Technologies. Uh, this is not on the asset store, uh, but you can find a link in the description below. Um, and this contains some sample animations that we're going to be using, um, some strafing animations. I did find, to f uh, I did try to find some strafing animations from Mixamo, uh, but I wasn't quite happy with anything that I got. Um, so I've chosen this this package. Um, so you can download this here, download as a zip file, um, and I've already done that here. Uh, cool. Um, so yeah, it's worth checking out this package as well. Uh, there are some, it's got a ton of stuff in it, like all types of character controllers, some first person ones. Um, it's got some sample animations, it's got some cine machine samples. It's, uh, it's a lot newer than the standard uh, assets package that has been around for, for ages. It's, all, uh, it's nice and up to date. Um, cool, so let's just go back to Unity and the first thing that we'll need to do is uh, just open the demo scene in the Polygon Starter Pack and uh, I'm going to be using this male character for this tutorial. Uh, I've just gone ahead and dragged it out of the demo objects uh, thing here and uh, yeah, just so it's a little bit easier to access. Cool, so uh, the first thing that we need to do is just attach a camera to our player. So if we just go Cine Machine, uh, create free look camera and we need to assign the follow and look at properties. So if I just drag the uh, male character into the follow, uh, we also need to create a new game object uh, just for the camera to look at. I like to call this a uh, camera look at and assign that to our camera. Um, and we just want to position this camera look at object to uh, the head of the character. Um, so it's kept outside of the skeleton just so it's not affected by any animations. So the next thing we need to do is just add some physics to our character. So a rigid body component and a capsule collider. Uh, just set the height to 1.8 and the offset to 0.9, which is half of the height. Uh, set the radius to 0.2 is pretty snug fit. And then just freeze the rotation on the rigid body. Cool. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is just create a animation controller. Um, called third person shooter and assign that to our animator here third person shooter cool uh, we need to set the update mode to animate physics just because we're using physics so if I go ahead and open the animation controller uh, create a new uh, state here uh, called blend tree double click that uh, I normally name this to locomotion and yeah, we're going to be adding our directional animations to this blend tree. Um, so we want to set the blend type to 2D freeform directional because this is going to be our horizontal and our vertical axes from fed in from our input. Um, so if we just go to the parameters, we can rename this default one called uh, input X and create a new one called input Y. And then just set that second parameter to use our newly created one. Cool. Uh, so this is where the GitHub package uh, comes in. We need to uh, go to your project folder here and then uh, open the GitHub package in a new window and just navigate to uh, standard assets, characters, assets, standard assets, uh, characters, animation, mail, yeah, so we just want to drag this entire folder into our project view. And we can see that, yeah, it's brought in a ton of uh, animations. The important thing is it also brings in this this rig here. So just make sure you have that. Um, the animations we're going to be using is rapid strafe forwards, rapid strafe right, 
rapid strafe right run backwards rapid strafe right run forwards and strafe idle there are some walking ones in here as well but we're going to be ignoring them for now so if we go to our blend tree we just need to create some new motion fields um, you can see if i add two of them uh, the graph appears where it will allow us to blend between the animations using our input parameters um, so i'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of these okay cool so uh, now we have our different animation uh, nodes in here that we're going to blend between we need to assign our animations um, so the this is going to be the forwards the backwards the left and the right uh, the left motions are going to be mirrored from the right motions actually uh, reversed not not mirrored there's a slight difference there um, so I'm just going to go ahead and assign these Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit uh, tedious assigning those animations. Um, just make sure you have them all in the same order that you can see here. Um, the left ones, which are all the ones with the X parameter set to negative one, we need to reverse. Um, and the other thing to note is the uh, we're, because we're reversing the backwards animation, that's actually assigned to the forwards uh, slot in our graph. Uh, so just pay attention to these. Um, the other one that we need to reverse is the backwards uh, animation. Cool, um, so if we just hit play, uh, we can test this out here. Forwards, backwards, left, right. Cool, that all looks pretty good. Um, so now we just need to hook up a script uh, to our, our character here um, to control those input parameters. So I'm gonna create a new script called uh, character locomotion. Uh, I'm not sure why that hasn't opened character locomotion. Cool. So the first thing that we need to do is just get a reference to our animator to set those parameters. And we're also going to need a variable to store our input. Uh, just creating it here saves us sort of creating it every frame inside the update loop. Uh, so the animator, we can get a reference inside the start function. And now our input, we basically just want to read in the standard way. Oops, sorry input get access so our horizontal input is assigned to the x component and our vertical input is assigned to the y and now we just need to feed those values into our animation controller using the names of the parameters we created previously cool so if we Hit play in here, we should be able to move our character forwards, backwards, left, right, and the diagonals. Uh, forwards, backwards, left, right, diagonals. Cool. Um, I've just realized that the camera actually needs to be inverted. Uh, for a standard third person shooter, uh, you need to invert these, these properties here. So let's just test that out again. Cool. Uh, yeah, that looks, that looks a bit better. Um, so the next thing we need to do is just make our player uh, turn towards the camera um, so I'm going to create a new script called character aiming I like to separate my character motion uh, into two components one called locomotion which is equivalent to the left joystick on your controller uh, and the other one called character aiming which is equivalent to the right joystick on the controller um, yeah so if we open up this character aiming script. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is getting the rotation of the camera and the y-axis and making the player uh, blend towards that rotation. We don't want to change the x or the z-axis of the player because that would mean, mean it would tip over. It's only the y-axis we're going to control. Um, so we need a new uh, property here called uh, turn speed. I'll just assign this the default value of 15 and a reference to our camera which we can get in the start function. And this is going to be a super simple script. Um, so we just need to get the uh, the rotation of the camera and the y-axis. I like to call this uh, the camera yaw. Um, so we do that just by getting the, oops, um, I'm just going to call this main, main camera. Seems to complain if I just have it called camera. Dot transform dot rotation dot eula dot y so that's how you get the the twist of the camera effectively how much it's rotated in the y-axis and now we need to 
uh, blend our player's rotation towards uh, that. So if we go transform.rotation equals, we're going to use our quaternion.slurp uh, to move from our current rotation towards our new quaternion that we're going to create here. Uh, zero, your camera, zero, and use our turn speed. Um, I've just realized this needs to be changed to fixed update because we're modifying the transform um, and the and our character has physics all of this should be done inside fixed update cool so um, yeah let me just give a summary so we've got the the rotation of the camera in the y-axis um, and then we're blending that's what the slurp thing means uh, using quaternions to blend from the the current player's rotation towards uh, the camera's rotation but only in the y-axis that's what this means and that's that's it for the the aiming script so now if we just hit play oops without pause cool so now we can see as I turn the camera um, the player follows accordingly which is great uh, so there are a couple of issues that we need to fix if I hit uh, strafe the camera the player is actually now moving in a circle um, and that is because of the um, the what do they call it the binding mode of the, the free look camera so just select your city machine free look camera and we need to change this from simple follow with world up just change that to world space that means the camera will stay behind the player rather than uh, turning to face towards it um, now there's another couple of really really subtle things uh, but for a third person shooter oh, sorry yeah we can see here that the camera now moves correctly uh, it doesn't it doesn't move in a circle when we strafe um, so there are a couple of other really important things for a third person shooter uh, the camera controls need to feel really uh, accurate um, so we want to get rid of all blending um, so we can kind of see the camera kind of moves about even after our player stops uh, which we want to get rid of. Um, so to do that, we just go into the body of the rigs and just get rid of all the damping uh, for all three rigs. And now if we hit play, our camera now moves without any damping. It moves exactly following the player, which is great. Um, and then the other thing that we want to do, uh, let me just go back into play mode and show you this. It's very subtle, but if I um, if I move the mouse and stop the mouse, um, see the the camera still blends a little bit. It doesn't come to a stop immediately, so we want to get rid of that as well. Um, so that's in the axis control. Um, basically, the body is the the keyboard forward, backwards, left mouse, and the axis control is pretty much the mouse. Um, so if I just set this to a really small value, 0.02, uh, both on the y and the x axes. Now, when I hit play, so now you can kind of see that when the mouse comes to a stop, the camera stops completely, which is exactly what I want. Um, and the, the final thing to do is actually to just turn off the cursor. So I can do this in the aiming script equals false cursor dot lock state equals lock mode dot locked. Um, so if we just hit play again, cool, um, which now looks pretty good. So we can actually uh, turn in a circle, uh, which is pretty similar to Fortnite and PUBG, um, except the we just need a crosshair. So let me just add that as well. Uh, so the easiest way to create a crosshair is just doing it with the canvas. Uh, that means it will always be in screen space. So if I just add an image here. Um, there's a built-in image called knob which you can use to set the width and the height to 5 um, and set the canvas to scale with screen so if I hit play now we have a really simple crosshair in the center um, we just need to offset the player from that crosshair because right now it's in the way um, so the easiest way to do that in Cine Machine is uh, using an extension called uh, Cine machine camera offset and the parameters I have already figured out uh, 0.38 0.15 0.84 
cool. So now we have a crosshair slightly offset from the player. Um, it looks a bit jerky right now, but that is just because the inspector is open and that seems to slow things down. So if I close the inspector, go back into play mode, yeah, now it's like really smooth. And yeah, now we've got a really simple crosshair. Can aim up, aim down, uh, go left, right. And yeah, that's that's basically exactly what we want. Um, we can actually like circle objects as you'd expect. Um, we can like aim at different objects here. So yeah, this all feels really good. That's it for this tutorial. Uh, if you'd like to see more content like this, please like and subscribe and I can continue producing more videos. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and see you again. Kakite!